Welcome back everyone. Moving on to the next word problem dealing with quadratics. So a ball is thrown off a roof and its height in meters relative to time, which is in seconds, is given by this equation. H equals negative 3t squared plus 13t plus 10. So given that, we have to find at what time does the ball land on the ground? Part B, what is the max height of the ball? And at what time does it reach the max height? We have to provide the answers as exact values, so they can't be decimals. And then in part C, what are the valid T values? There should be a question mark right there. All right, so let's go through these one by one. I'm going to erase this part. I'll keep this scenario up so we can refer to it. So first thing, we gotta find when is the ball going to hit the ground? Well, when it hits the ground, what's the H value gonna be? Well, it's gonna have a height above the ground of zero. So basically, we have to solve this quadratic equation right here for part A. Okay, so I'll solve this, and then as the video goes on, I'll make a drawing throughout the process. But for now, let's just keep it algebraic here. So finding when the height is zero, first thing, Let's take out this negative. Notice we can't take out anything else because 3, 13, 10, they don't have any common factors. But I do want to take out this negative here to make uh, the leading coefficient here positive. So let's have that. And then let's see if we could factor this quadratic. So let me write it over here. So notice the A value is 3, the B value is negative 13, the C value is negative 10, the AC value is negative 30. We've got to find two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and then add up to that B value of negative 13. So that would be what? Um, negative 15 and 2. Negative 15 times 2 gives us negative 30. Negative 15 plus 2 gives us negative 13. So we decompose this. like that. From these two, we could take out a 3t, so we'd be left with t minus 5. From these two, we could take out a 2, and we'd be left with t minus 5. And we could take out a t minus 5, and we'd be left with 3t plus 2, like that. So this bracket factors into those two brackets. So going back to the equation, we'd have t minus 5 times 3t plus 2 like that. Now, to solve this, basically we have to find the t values that make the h value zero. So that's going to happen either when t minus 5 is zero, when this bracket is zero, or when 3t plus 2 is equal to zero. So this is going to happen at a t value of 5. This is going to happen when 3t is negative 2, or when t is negative 2 over 3. So notice that in this particular scenario, we're dealing with time, time can't be negative, right? So this here would be not admissible of a solution. And so the answer is five seconds. The ball lands on the ground five seconds after being thrown. We are gonna use this other T value though to solve for the vertex. So we're actually gonna solve the vertex in two ways because the vertex is gonna be a little bit more complex in this particular case. It's actually not gonna end up being uh, integers, it's gonna be fractions. So I'm going to find the vertex by finding the midpoint between the intercepts, which is that axis symmetry, then plugging it in to get the h value, but I'll also complete the square so you could see, or we can get some practice with uh, finding the vertex form or dealing with completing the square when we are dealing with fractions. So um, the answer to part A, let's actually keep track of it over here. So the answer to part A, is t equals 5. So at 5 seconds, the ball hits the ground. But let's also keep track of that other intercept, negative 2 over 3. So if we draw this so far, we have t, we have h. So we got negative 2 over 3 over here. And then we have a t value of 5 over here. I know that 
this here is not going to apply to the word problem, but again, I am going to use it to find that vertex. So what we want to do is we want to find what's the T value of the vertex going to be. Notice that the vertex is going to be somewhere up here, right? Because this is a parabola that's opening down because that A value is negative. And that makes sense if you're drawing uh, a ball being thrown off the roof, right? You can model it with an upside down parabola. We also know this over here. They didn't ask for it in this question, but we can get the uh, H-intercept pretty easily by plugging in zero for T. So zero, zero, we'd be left with 10 over here, right? So the height of the roof is 10 meters. If they ask that, that's the H-intercept. They didn't ask that, so um, we don't have to further discuss it, but yeah, it just gives you a little bit more detail in your graph. So let's first find this T value, the T value of this vertex, which is going to be the midpoint between those two points. So how do we find the axis of symmetry again? Well, we add the intercepts divide by two. So this would be like negative two over three plus 15 over three. If we change the five to have a denominator of three, this is going to be divided by two. So this is going to be like uh, 13 over three. And we're going to be dividing by two, which is like dividing by two over one, which is like 13 over three times one over two, which would give us 13 over six like that. Right? So this T value would be 13 over six, which means the T value of the vertex would be 13 over six. Now, if you wanted to get the decimal, this here would be approximately 2.166 repeating. But again, we have to provide it as exact value, so no decimals. So we have the T value of the vertex. Now, what about the H value? Well, we can get it by plugging in that 13 over six into the equation. So we'd have H equals negative three, 13 over six squared plus 13 times 13 over six plus 10 like that. So this would be negative three, 13 to the power two would be 169, six to the power two would be 36 plus 169 over six plus 10. So let's see what happens here. Three goes into 36 12 times. So we can actually change this to be negative 169 over 12 plus 169 over six uh, plus 10. So if we get a common denominator here, this 10 is like over one. Uh, the common denominator will be 12. So we multiply this by two, multiply this by two, by two, or sorry, by 12, right? And then this by 12, like that. So we'd have negative 169 over 12 plus 169 times two would give us what? Um, 338, this would be over 12 plus 120 over 12 like that. And then we would end up with negative 169 plus 338, which would give us positive 169 plus 120 would give us 289. And that would be over 12 like that. And then that fraction doesn't simplify any further. So that ends up being the H value of the vertex that also ends up being the uh, maximum height. And again, if you want to get the decimals, it would be about 24.08 if you ever wanted to get the decimals. But again, we got to keep everything in fractions. And so that actually answers uh, part B for us because the max height is equal to the 289 over 12 meters or the 24.08 meters. And then the time of the max height, when it reaches that max height, is uh, 13 over six seconds, or 2.167 seconds. 
okay? So that's one way to get the vertex. Now, what if we were to complete the square? What if we were to take this and change it to vertex form? So this is going to be quite a bit of algebra, um, but I do want to go through it just in case maybe your teacher expects you uh, to know how to do it. And also it will verify this answer for us. We'll see if we get that same vertex when we change it to vertex form. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take out the negative three from both of these. So we'd have t squared minus 13 over 3t. This doesn't simplify, right? So when we take something out, what we're doing is we're dividing everything by what we took out. So this gets divided by negative three, so we're left with a t squared. Then the 13t gets divided by negative three. And notice this doesn't simplify, so it just ends up being negative 13 over three, t like that. And then we have <coughs> the positive 10 on the outside. Then what's the next step? Well, we take that 13 over three, we divide it by two, and then we square it. So we know what to do with a plus and minus, right? So this would be like 13 over three times one over two, that's gonna be squared, which would be like 13 over six. That's gonna be squared, which would give us 169 over 36 like that. So what we do is we have negative three t squared minus 13 over three t plus 169 over 36 minus 169 over 36 like that. And then we have the plus 10 on the outside like that. Okay, and then from here what we do is we take this out of the bracket, we gotta multiply it by the negative three. So we'd end up with negative three t squared minus 13 over three t plus 169 over 36. And then negative 169, let's do this on the side, negative 169 over 36 times negative three, well the negatives would make a positive, those would cancel, and then three goes into 36 12 times. So it would end up being positive 169 over 12. And then we still have that plus 10 on the end, like that, right? So quite a bit of algebra. It's the exact same process. We've done these kinds of questions where we've had to complete the square with fractions, but again, just some further practice with this kind of algebra. And so over here, what does, what does this always, this is always a perfect square trinomial. What is it always gonna be? It's always gonna be t, this sign, and then it's gonna be half of this value, and half of 13 over three, we already did that. That's 13 over six, and then that's gonna be squared. If you take this and expand it, you'd end up with this quadratic right there. Right? It's the exact same process as if we had integers. It's just sometimes with fractions, it could be tougher to remember, but it is the same process. And then over here, these two, I'm actually just going to do it over here. So it would be 120 over 12. That's where we could change it to 10 to, and that would end up being 289 over 12. And so notice now it's in vertex form. So this is actually the exact same quadratic as this over here. Okay, it's also the same quadratic as that factored form that we had before. If you took all of these graphed it in Desmos, you'd actually see it's the same graph, right? It's kind of tough to see that this and this are the same because this is all integers. This is a bunch of fractions in here, but they actually are the same. And then from here, we could tell what's the vertex. Same thing, 13 over six, 289 over 12. So two different ways to get that vertex. Whichever way you do it, you do need that vertex to answer part B. Okay, and then um, finally part C, what are the valid T values here? Because we're dealing with a word problem, notice that we actually ignore this part of the quadratic right here. We're only dealing with this part, right? Because the time can't be negative, also the height can't be negative, so we wouldn't extend it. It would only end right there when the ball lands on the ground. So the valid t values are from zero to when it lands on the ground, which is five seconds. Um, if your teacher is covering domain, they may or may not be. It's a grade 11 concept, but if they are, then it's basically t can be any real number as long as it's between 
zero in five seconds. If your teacher is not covering this over here, you could just ignore that part, uh, but maybe they will be. So that's how you would state the domain or the valid values for 